Hello, my name is Cal Moloney from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. Hello, I'm John Howard. I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And yes, plenty of anarchists here in Richmond. Yes. And so today we're going to bring to you the news from Underground, talking about specifically on the topic on the Tesla Motor Companies. Uh, I guess in response to the numerous bans that many states are trying to prevent them from entering the, the markets, from entering, um, I guess, easy, accessible way for you, the consumer, to, to have the product removed from the middleman. But before we begin, we're going to talk about Tesla himself. Um, and a little bit about the ways how, I guess, government interference in his own life kind of prevented many of the discoveries that he yeah. put forth, many of the inventions from, from entering the market. Nikola Tesla, yeah, he was first to utilize the uh, alternating current uh, uh, as, as opposed to what we use now in our homes, direct current. DC. AC versus DC. AC versus DC. Not yeah. the band, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so very similar. Or have yeah. you seen the movie Prestige uh, yeah. with Christian Bell and... Uh, Jack Huge, I believe. Hugh Jackman, yeah. Hugh Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> or Wolverine, as people most yeah. uh, iconically know him as. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I, or if you go to DC, the Smithsonian, the American History Museum, they have a like they have these huge uh, exhibits on like the American yeah. adventurers, the 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 people who created America. And but of course, when you go, you see like all these halls about um, Edison. But then, like somewhere within this particular yeah. uh, exhibit of halls of of, uh, of fame, they find you'll find a small little plaque. Yeah. of Nikola Tesla. Really, really tiny. It's very hard to miss. Well, actually, it's very easy to miss. It's uh, very far removed. You kind of have to go out of your way. It's like on a little pillar on a wall, a supporting beam. And right there, you know, a little mention of uh, Nikola Tesla. So at least they could say, hey, yeah, yeah, there, there he is. But then, yeah, ignore yeah. him and, you know, behold, Edison. But obviously, all of our viewers know here, you know, you could easily uh, Google Tesla's name and you can find many inventions, you know, hydro power inventions and whatnot and things that he kind of came up with that have just, we we still news today and yeah. that he influenced, but he's not really given the proper credit for. So uh, this whole, you know, article and uh, or what we're talking about today about Tesla Motors, you know, we want to just give him the proper, you know, introduction yeah. before we go into, you know. I would say he was ahead of his time uh, in many particular areas. Of course, I mean, that goes without saying many people who are familiar with Nikola Tesla, uh, people will say he was perhaps also an alien, um, oh. I guess, <laughs> in the way that he would have vividly dream of these inventions yeah. and uh, sketch them out and, and they would work. Uh, it was just before, before his time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but of course, he had a lot of run-in with uh, competition with Edison. He worked under Edison for a while until he uh, separated and created his own, cause, his own company because he felt he could do it better and efficiently and a lot more, um, I guess, conducive and, uh, I guess, harnessing that, that power harnessing. Like, Electricity. But of course, uh, like many uh, businesses that don't like competition, you know, they get in bed with the government and now they can use government and power to kind of cease and desist uh, that kind of work of um, competing work. Yeah, that's why that way is just so lazy to me. Right. Like, just, you know, <laughs> hey, I need help. Help me. You know, they, he stole my lunch money. You know, yeah. Like, Come on. You can't just you do it yourself, you know, like or have the support. So the, the government ended up raiding his lab and stealing all of his scientific research. Yeah, so a lot of his uh, important paperwork's missing, gonna miss. Some information has been uh, available through the Freedom of Information Act in the past recent years, but again, uh, that's what they choose to you know release to us tax slaves. You know, mm -hmm. um, but again, he filed over 300, 300 patents. I know we're against intellectual property, uh, but. I guess uh, a lot of remarkable achievements this uh, gentleman has done. But again, like the intellectual property uh, argument wasn't, I believe, as uh, available or known at the time. And or arguments against statism. But I guess he himself would have firsthand knowledge of how that can come to be, kind of like uh, Lysander Spooner and the government attempts to try to shut him down. Um, but if you look at, uh, I guess, voluntary, recent voluntary interactions in regards to Tesla, there was an Indigo campaign and trying to uh, raise money to, to buy against one of his former laboratories. And they raised over a million dollars. Yeah. You know, this is uh, voluntary contributions, voluntary donations of people's, you know, time and commitment towards mm -hmm. this project without uh, stealing other people's money. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, cross-source funding? Go ahead. No, Indiegogo. So yeah, I yeah. just wanted to, you know, for our viewers to clarify. Yeah, the, the, the name of the nonprofit campaign was... Uh, was by Indiegogo, so just and then they saved it. So they, they managed to to amass that amount yeah. of uh, voluntary contributions, and uh, now they're going to turn it to uh, an interactive exhibit. Any entrepreneurs would be scientists can come and visit and uh, and explore the home. Uh, one of the many homes I would, I would feel that he felt at home at many of his laboratories. He slept very little, about like two hours or so. Yeah, so almost like Da Vinci, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> taking um, many naps here yeah. and there. All right, so we're going to move towards uh, Tesla Motors themselves, and they actually use an AC current motor to power their vehicles. They target the higher end range with hopes to, you know, eventually, with a long-term goal, enter the more you know, the, the 
broader consumer market what with uh, to offer low cost electric vehicles um, they f focus on pure electric propulsion technology uh, for vehicles range 200 miles and beyond they also focus on maybe um, you know higher capacity vehicles like freight uh, you know trucks and whatnot uh, they sell their business model is based on selling their own vehicles directly to customers uh, either through uh, online resources or through company-owned showrooms, so they get a lot of, uh, you know, resistance from state governments across the country, and we'll get more into that later uh, by going directly selling to their customers as opposed to dealerships. Right. So uh, they're also, moving the middleman. Yeah, they also sell uh, powertrain components, other battery uh, kind of technology components. They received a grant from the U.S. Uh, government not so long ago. Yeah, and I guess that's uh, the different aspects of it we're going to talk about in regards to, to Tesla. For the first seven years when they started in 2003, they was completely funded on private money. Um, but again, in, in the ways of yeah. how the society is set up and the structure that's set up, um, I guess you do what you have to do to survive, uh, do what you have to do for now, um, you know, until you can uh, get, get off of this bad government assistance, government... Uh, um, that cheat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then after seven years, I would imagine, well, look, after seven years, you've done successfully well. It's like, well, I would imagine then perhaps you didn't need to have that uh, government uh, handout. Mm -hmm. but, um, but at the same time, they borrowed nearly half a billion dollars from the government. I guess uh, taxpayer loans assistance, of course. Um, so I wouldn't say that's uh, completely free market like because, of course, I don't know. If, I guess I would say businesses would know, have a better understanding that taxation is theft. It's not uh, government's money. It's mm -hmm. everyone else's money. It's the it's uh, you, your the individual's money. Um, but they have this interesting uh, tagline on the website that says. Uh, the only American car company to have paid back the government. Yeah. Right. So it would have been a lot more worthwhile, I guess, noteworthy for to say um, to pay back uh, the people that we borrowed. You know, or I guess you can't really say borrow. You just kind of, yeah. um, you know, use their stolen money to begin with. But at least they paid it back, but they didn't pay it back to you. I mean, you didn't see like an extra check come back into the mail for you, right? No, no. Um, there's this uh, money that the uh, mafia organization of the Department of Energy was uh, loaning out and giving out. Um, but I would say that's so far the only negative thing that we found. I mean, you have to look at this objectively. And, uh, and unfortunately, that's the state of the affairs, uh, I guess, in terms of politics. Um, but first, first seven years, completely independent, completely um, non-governmental uh, support. Um, and on their own, I think that's uh, north worthy, and, and they paid it back, right? So at least yeah. uh, they're back on their own track and trying to go back to private funding. The uh, forgot to mention the founder, uh, oh, Elon, yeah. Elon Musk. He is happens to be a PayPal a Coke founder of yeah. PayPal, so he's kind of a billionaire to begin with. Uh, right? Yeah. So he's so, got quite of a monetary interest <laughs> so, investments there. Yeah. But I guess it's sometimes it could be hard, I guess, in the, in the realm of business to, to kind of turn down that offer. You know, you're in the business of making money, but I would imagine that at some point, I guess, you sort of start adopting some ethical values when it comes to that. Um, so, you know, try to resist, uh, you, you know, having to borrow stolen money from, from government. So, but of course, uh, that's stuff that uh, perhaps more campaigning can be done to kind of alert these companies to to that you know just like the um ceo of uh mozilla firefox stepped down i guess recently because of uh, the outcry support of his uh contribution towards anti-gay marriage uh, campaigns Ooh, okay. so um and, and that kind of supporting that kind of uh boycotting uh helped change i guess the dynamics and the structure mm -hmm. and uh instilling ethics i would imagine not that i'm for government being in involved in marriage in the first place no. but at the same time don't advocate the opposite and fund the opposition and preventing people who, who just want to get together yeah. right a great example of the power of the consumer right right yeah yeah the, the real boss is you the consumer yes. um so yeah so that's uh that's his uh that's tesla they have an interesting model and yeah. trying to cut out the middleman trying to give you directly the the product yeah yeah removed from the costs the thing the important thing is that's how it's always been right the the, the idea of these things called an automotive dealers associations which is basically uh, a fancy name for a union for of the elite or of the what, how did you call it? The cartels. cartels yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, the, the, they claim to protect consumer rights and they claim to encourage competition by, instead of Tesla coming into your state uh, or here in Virginia and, and telling directly, they say, oh, John Howard must open his own dealership so we can give jobs to John Howard in his community. Um, instead of having Tesla come in and bring their own people, Chinese immigrant, I don't know, who yeah. knows, uh, you know, what the argument is on that uh, front. But it's just simply not true. 
Yeah. Um, Pretty much every any association that's involved with politics or with has a government relations such as this is a cartel. It has nothing, 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 nothing to do with consumer protection. It's all about protecting their cartel interest. All about uh, protecting the source from from competition, and which about 40, 48 uh, tax firms in the United States of uh, America is uh, forty eight states a, 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 attempted to do. Um, so they have laws. They have uh, measures to uh, to prevent them from uh, competing in their new unique way of uh, removing the middleman, which which is great because it removes costs. You know, needless costs uh, associated with these uh, with these with these with their products with their goods. Um, it's no different than um, Apple having their own store and selling their products directly through their own store. Yeah. Um, instead of having to, I mean, can you imagine only going to Best Buy, right? Best Buy is the only place you can buy Apple products. Uh, going to um, well, AT and T is the only place you can buy iPhones. Well, and on the other hand, why is Apple privileged enough to have their own Apple stores, but right. Tesla can't, right? So, 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 so yeah, so they find discrimination of goods. A good is a good. It's a product. Is uh, this is a good? You know, this this is a product. You know, uh, products, product, products. That's, that's all it is. It's uh, cons consumer goods, consumer services. Uh, but it's a state that discriminates between that. Um, instead of allowing you, the consumer, to discern yourself, that you're a competent individual to to know whether or not this is a good service to, to match your preference or needs. But of course, these cartels, these associations, uh, feel that you're too incompetent, which is why. They, you know, they try to always co you know, cower behind you know the veil curtain and saying this is for consumer protectionism. This is for your own good, um, and, and that's really the only way that a, a, a company like Ford or any of these companies can really survive. I mean, if you go back to the '60s, you had Pontiac, Buick, you had yeah. all these different you know startup companies that have all been wiped out as government regulations and cartels increase. You know, it comes down there can only be one. You know, eventually, yeah. so. Um, if you want to talk about monopolies, that's how they're formed, you know, through, yeah. through government uh, state-backed intervention um, in, in these matters. And that's why you don't see a rich variety of ways of, uh, or to a better quality of vehicles. You know, people are talking about, well, what about the future? What about uh, the new modes of transportation? Well, as long as there's government and the states involved, it's going to be very difficult to, to find that. It's like holding back a flood of all this rich, diverse ways to kind of um, to enjoy life, to, to experience travel, um, yeah. modes of transportation, um, cheaper sources of energy. Um, so you find like you look at like I guess the laptops for example computers that uh, like every other year it's like if there's a new design it's thinner it's faster it's more efficient uh, holds more memory mm. uh, you know the upgrades in technology and that but you look at a vehicle and a car for example like the the engine hasn't really changed yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and that's kind of one of the things that Tesla actually did like literally they used laptop batteries they used like the the this business they said well this is already on the market we might as well just use eight thousand of these. Yeah. Instead of like having two huge cell batteries to power the car, like some automakers do, that's just very inefficient. You have to find, you have to find people who are going to make those batteries for you. Tesla was like, "Well, it's already here in the market. Let's just use this." Yeah, um, which is genius, right? I mean, now it's kind of being phased out. Flat cell battery technology is coming in, but um, it's it's very uh, you know a good business model to kind of follow, and this is how innovation happens in the market. Yeah, naturally, organically. Yeah, uh, through that market demand. Yeah. Um, Any of us could have come up with that idea. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we need today: entrepreneurs, people who want to take that risk, the adventurers, uh, the risk takers. Um, those are the real pioneers of, uh, I guess, the market forces, not uh, politicians or lobbyists or automotive dealer associations. Uh, they hold back that innovation. They hold back, uh, I guess, that ingenuity um, from you ever seeing what, I guess, the markets of tomorrow could look like. Um, so yeah, so there are uh, Virginia laws that prohibit that. Uh, they have a little showcase here. I guess if you're from uh, familiar with Virginia, up yeah. near Tyson's Corner, there's a showcase of vehicles there you can see. Um, but they're not allowed to sell cars. Yeah, they can't talk <laughs> prices. So they're you can only get a T-shirt. Yeah, it's illegal for them to discuss. Uh, I guess prices uh, yeah. to, to tell you how much it could be MSRP or, or whatnot. Um, so that's uh, kind of upsetting. DMV is also involved. DMV, I guess the, well, I guess the well Tesla, uh, they applied for an exemption, hopefully in the, in the state of Virginia, mm -hmm. right, to to be the only dealer to be able to sell directly to customers, which is uh, throws up some red flags because why are you the only one uh, as opposed to others? But um, you know, their business model is kind of set up in a different way. But you know, DMV denied it, citing that Tesla had not done enough to to um, I guess to talk to market promote, that, to, yeah, to promote get, the um, idea of getting a dealer themselves. To get yeah. local people who would be interested in franchising. Um, you know, I guess they're saying uh, you haven't made this publicly, uh, uh, I guess, awareness campaign is not really particular mm -hmm. out there, so they have their arbitrary decisions. So, sorry, uh, we don't feel that uh, you've done enough, so, you know, you're not going to have this grant, be granted this exception. And, of course, the 
I guess the advocacy, the call to action on this would not be so much to say, well, you know, grant them the exception. Again, the, the advocacy of, um, of all of this violence is always to end the state, you know, right. uh, like with cannabis, don't uh, advocate legalized cannabis, advocate end the state. You know, yeah. that's the <laughs> advocate ending that, that kind of violent enforcement, the, um, the arbitrators of uh, yeah. trying to prevent these, uh, I guess, fun, rich market ways to experience and enjoy our lives. Um, yeah, there's a petition in whitehouse.gov or whatever to let uh, a Tesla sell in all 50 states, but you don't realize that you're, you're petitioning for a one company to be able to have privileges over, you know, a company that you yourself maybe yeah. started. Like, why would you do that? Like, yeah. <laughs> How about the petition so, to end the White House, right? Exactly. <laughs> Where was that petition? Uh -huh. um, that, that, that's that's the cost and source of all these problems to begin with. You know, these uh, strangers who dictate and feel that you're not uh, economic proficient or competent enough to make uh, adult choices and uh, selecting consumer goods. Right. I mean, there, if, if, it's, if it's regulation, there's always going to be consumer reports. There's always going to be consumer rating services. Um, you know, look at their background. Do they invest in their own uh, business? Do they have, you know, billboard signs? Do they have uh, customer reviews that you can look over in the, the goods mm. span in like past 10 years? Like, well, yeah. we've been in the business in 10 years we're throwing a guarantee you know that's 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 uh, i guess consumer regulatory uh waste that we ourselves do all the time uh mm -hmm. to ensure i guess uh product security um and then you know, there's also warrants and stuff like that that you know i guess uh different ways to protect it from fraud right. um but yeah that's uh something that you can do uh don't don't advocate for i guess status privilege um yeah. advocate against the state <laughs> advocate for energy freedom right and, yeah. and when, we, when we cover tesla we're not only advocating for you know uh, electric vehicles right i mean there have been uh gasoline engine carburetors since the 1930s called you know you can google it called the fish carburetor that's you know supposedly super efficient a guy in the 60s i think his name is tom ogle don't quote me on that <laughs> but he took two fish carburetors put them together on his car had a hundred mile per gallon car it was a big v8 tank of a car you know like you know back in the 60s and 70s they were huge 100 miles per gallon. Um, another guy uh, in Popular Mechanics magazine, uh, Steve Lapp, a professor from Ontario, made a uh, 100 miles per gallon car with, you know, putting solar panels on his roof and wiring it in a certain way. And what happened to him? Uh, Did the guy who disappeared? No, well, I think Tom Ogle was the guy back yeah. in the 70s. Uh, yeah. It's funny how these people can always kind of vanish. Yeah, so, and someone in there kind of got. Quiet, Not to really say that we're trying to spot throw out conspiracy theory, because I remember hearing about this guy who created this um, way to harness, I guess, energy through water um, yeah. a while ago. Panja talks about this guy a lot too, but then of course he magically disappears. Um, yeah. And not to say that's not uh, something that doesn't happen. You know, people disappear all the time. There's a National Defense Authorization Act. They can kidnap you on any moment's notice without a, without a reason, without a warrant. If they uh, feel arbitrarily that you are a terrorist, loosely defined, of course. Um, so yeah, this stuff happens. That's the age that we live in. Um, so don't uh, put that out of mind thinking that it can't happen. It happens all the time. Um, so yeah, that's the um, yeah, yeah. that's that's what ends up happening. You don't have all these futuristic vehicles that you would love to see out there on the roads. Maybe cars that are able yeah. to uh, drive themselves. Like yeah, that's always the important question. What would have happened otherwise without the Virginia car dealership associations and all of the people, you know, raising their hand? Hey, come help me enforce my privileges over yeah. the other person. Um, what could have happened otherwise? Uh, is a great question. Yeah. So let's not uh, advocate for privileges or exemptions advocate for an end to these cartels, yeah. uh, to the end of uh, state intervenience, uh, to, and th that violent intervenience in, in the market uh, to voluntary interactions. Yeah. So exactly. that's our show. That's our uh, show. So with yeah. that, uh, hopefully you uh, enjoy this uh, discussion. And uh, my name is Kamal Lane. I'll see you guys at the Victory Party. My name is John Howard. I'll see you next time.